so first things first, the velocity of a moving object is a vector. And the reason why is because velocity is the same thing as speed. Okay, velocity and speed, you can almost use those words interchangeably. We kind of already do. We didn't mean to do that. Um, you can kind of use those words interchangeably, but velocity is a little bit more specific. Okay. Um, when you're driving down the road and you look at your speedometer, um, it's just referencing how quickly your car is moving down the road, the rate of change, how much distance you're covering over an amount of time. Now, if it was a velocitometer, okay, if it showed your velocity, it would have positive and negative because velocity uh, includes direction. If you're moving to the right, you have positive velocity. If you're moving to the left, you have negative velocity. If you're moving up, you have positive velocity. If you're moving down, you have negative velocity. Speed, doesn't matter what direction you're going, it's just talking about your rate of change. Okay? Um, so, the magnitude of velocity is speed. When you take the square root of your components, you're going to get your speed, and it's always positive. Let's look at this. We have a DC-10 jet aircraft that's flying north 65 degrees east at 500 miles per hour. We want to find the component form of the velocity of the airplane. Now, I don't know if any of you are in like Boy Scouts or something like this and you know um, bearings, um, <clears throat> but let's have a little crash course, okay? The number, not the number, the letter that comes first is where you start. So we're going to start going north, okay? Then it says 65 degrees east. That means we are going to move 65 degrees towards east. And if you don't know north, south, east, west, we got a problem, okay? Um, so that's not where we want angles when it comes to trig, right? Our angles have to be measured from the positive x-axis not from the positive y-axis. So before we can do any calculations, we got to figure this angle out right here. How do we figure out that angle? Subtract from 90, right? So that's what, 25 degrees? Okay, so if we want to find the component forms, we've got our x component is our magnitude. In this case, the magnitude is the speed, 500 miles per hour times the cosine of 25, not the angle that they gave us in the problem because that's not measured from the x-axis. So crunch that right there. Again, making sure that we are in degree mode. 500 cosine 25. The horizontal component of this aircraft's velocity is approximately 453.154. I usually go to about three decimals just so that I have more accuracy. The y component is of course 500 times the sine of 25 degrees, so in this case that is approximately 211.309, which makes sense if we think about it, if this is flying north 65 degrees east, it is closer to east than it is north, so your horizontal component should have more magnitude than the vertical component, because it's headed this way, okay, so more horizontal than vertical. It's an easy little check right there. All right, so simple little example. Let's look at um, two forces acting on an object. To find the resultant force that is acting on an object, you have to find the components of each vector um, for each force and add the components together. Okay, You can't just add the two forces together because they have different angles. Um, you've got to break them down in component form and then combine them. So here's a simple example of this. We have two forces, F sub 1 and 
have sub 2, they have magnitude 30 and 10 pounds respectively. That means that force 1 is 30, force 2 is 10, we keep them to order. The direction of force 1 is north 20 degrees east, and the direction of force 2 is south 65 degrees east. Find the magnitude and direction of the resultant force round to the nearest tenth. So let's draw this out. So we can get a little bit of a visual, and then uh, we will work on the numbers. All right, so force 1 is north 20 degrees east. Again, you start with the first letter, so we start heading north, and then we go 20 degrees towards east. And it's a force of 30 pounds. Pounds is a force, okay? It's not a, I mean, it is a measurement of weight, but your weight is a force, okay? It's the combination of your mass and gravity. <clears throat> Slip a little physics in there, okay? Um, I'm going to go ahead and draw force 2 before I go into the specifics. So force 2 is south. We start headed south, and we go 65 degrees towards east. And it is 10 pounds. All right, so we've got to break down force 1 into its components. We've got to break down force 2 into its components. I'm going to start with force 1, okay? The magnitude of force 1 is 30. Do I plug 20 into the cosine? No. What do I plug in? 70, okay? I have to, my, my <coughs> angles, any time I plug an angle into a trig function, it must be measured from the x-axis, the positive x-axis, okay? And you think that I'm crazy for saying it over and over again, but I promise you somebody's still going to screw it up. Not to be negative about it, but I do this every year, and every year somebody still messes it up because they don't listen, okay? So 30 cosine of 70, bless you. 30 sine of 70, so I'm, well, might as well go ahead and round. It does say round to the nearest tenth, so I'm going to go ahead and round. So we've got 10.3 and 28.2. Again, make sure that it makes sense, okay? It does make sense that the vertical component is larger than the horizontal component because we're only 20 degrees from north. It means we're more vertical than we are horizontal. Okay, force 2, we want to break that down as well. Now, the magnitude's 10, the angle, okay, the angle. You have a choice, okay, you have a choice. Um, there are two ways to measure this angle from the positive x-axis. We can measure it as a positive angle by going around counterclockwise. So in that case, what would we do to find this measured from the positive x-axis? At 270. Okay, we're going to go 270 and then we go 65 degrees beyond that. Or we can measure this as a negative angle. We can rotate clockwise. And what would that be as a negative angle? Negative 25. Okay, you can use either one. Personally, I kind of like the negative angle just because it. It fits in my little picture here. I don't go all the way around. I don't end up overlapping the other one. Um, but if you really don't like the negative, that's fine. You can use um, 335. Okay, it really doesn't matter. <coughs> and cosine negative 25. 10 sine negative 25. So our horizontal component is 9.1. It should be positive because we're in the fourth quadrant. X's are positive. Our Y component is negative 4.2. It should be negative because we're in the fourth quadrant. Okay. Doing those quick little checks as you do these problems, I promise you, will help you catch little mistakes that are made with the wrong angles. Okay, I promise you, if you do that, it will help you out so much. Um, now, I didn't label my X's and Y's here. It might be helpful. G 
just for clarification purposes. Okay? Um, but that's not all we have to do. Okay? The actual question is find the magnitude and the direction of the resultant force. So that means once we've broken these down into their pieces, we've got to put the pieces together. So our resultant force, when they're both acting on this object, we add the x's together, so we've got 10.3 plus 9.1, and we add the y's together, 28.2 plus negative 4.2. So the components of the resultant force are 19.4 and 24. So tell me this, just based on the components, is this being pulled more in force 1's direction or more in force 2's direction? Force 1, why do you say that? Right, they're both positive, so it's in the first quadrant. Force one is in the first quadrant. And it also kind of makes sense because force one is significantly greater than force two. 30 pounds versus 10 pounds. It makes sense that it should be more in that direction than in the other direction. Okay? But we're still not quite finished. We want the magnitude. Okay? We want the magnitude. That's just the components. Yes, I know these problems get a little long. Okay? But you got to keep your eye on what it actually wants. So square the y, or square the x, square the y, add them together, take the square root. Whoops. Square root of the answer. Okay. So the resultant force, the actual magnitude of that force, is thirty point nine pounds. Okay, the actual magnitude of that force is 30.9 pounds, and we also want the angle, so we do the inverse tangent of the y over the x, and make sure that angle is in the right quadrant. We're in the first quadrant. 51 degrees is in the first quadrant. So those are the actual answers that this question is asking for. Okay? So... No, it takes a little time, but I was trying to explain a lot of things in the meantime. They really don't take that long. Okay? Anytime you're combining two forces, you got to break them down into their components, add their components together, and then use this. We don't need these numbers anymore. We don't need blue and green numbers anymore after we get purple. Okay? Use the resultant force components to find its magnitude and its angle. And then check and make sure it makes sense.